Let's talk about ghosts. Hello, my fellow instrumentalists. We're continuing our discussion about the mechanics of shifting. If you're not already subscribed, or if you haven't seen the rest of the videos, take a look, jump back to the beginning, and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Today we're talking about ghosts, while well, we're talking about finger memory. We've all heard about muscle memory, the unconscious ability to sink a free throw shot or respond to a boxer's punch. But that's not exactly what I'm talking about when I'm talking about finger memory. What I'm referring to is more like conscious finger projection. Think of a racing video game. Maybe you've never played one, but either way, I'll be able to explain what I mean. In racing video games, sometimes you're playing by yourself and your goal is to get the best time possible across the track. So you race across the track and let's say you get a time of three minutes. You want to get your time better for the next go around. And so you try. You could just drive around and try again. Or in some video games, they give you what is considered like a shadow driver. And it'll be essentially a documentation of your previous go around. It'll be a little car that looks just like you, except it's transparent, a ghost and it will be driving the lap that you did previously, or your best time up to this date. And as a result, you get to watch yourself drive and see what you did right or wrong and learn from your mistakes more clearly. In other words, it gives you a really good frame of reference as to what you've already done. Whenever we shift, again, we have no frame of reference from the box itself, aside from where the F-holes are, and where the body of the instrument is, where the pegs are. We don't have any frets specifically. So to give ourselves a concept of distance, we can use what I like to call ghosts. And so we use this conscious finger projection where we try to instill in our memory and actually project the idea of where a current finger is so that we can reference it when we shift. So we'll take the example we've been using recently, which is going from first position in the A string to third position on the A string, and we'll be in the key of G major for now. Let's say we wanted to go from a B natural on the A string to a D natural on the A string. Now we can just go for it and hope that it works, or we can establish some frame of reference. Now in first position, we have our fingers, first finger, second finger, third finger, and fourth finger. One of those fingers is going to be very, very relevant to the new position. In this case, third finger is on a D natural, and therefore we can use the memory of it to accommodate where our first finger wants to go. So try to have a firm idea or a firm memory of where that third finger wants to be, and use it as a frame of reference for where the first finger will end up. From a vertical position, we have our first finger here, our third finger wants to be there, and we essentially attach a ghost with our mind of where that third finger is. And then the first finger goes to the resulting point. This simple concept can be expanded upon by allowing us to reduce the necessary size of intervals that we're thinking about. For example, if we decided to shift beyond third and fourth position, let's say we wanted to go all the way to fifth position, from first position. We don't have a fifth finger, so we don't have a reference, right? But we do have a reference for something close by. So we can use our fourth finger, establish the ghost, and then understand that our arrival note, in this case we're going to go to an F sharp, is a whole step above where that ghost is. So we take our first finger, we shift past the ghost a whole step. So we instill in our mind the position of where that fourth finger wants to be, and we shift a whole step above it. Using these ghosts or finger memories is extremely useful to give us a sense of reference when we're navigating this fretless fingerboard. I hope you found that helpful, and if you did, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe so that you don't miss the next video coming up, which we will put everything together that we've learned so far, and take a look at not ghosts, but Yoast.